I'm Lynn Hunsaker with Clear Action Experience Leadership Mastery. Welcome to this pivotal foundation for a shared vision of automatic experience excellence among your C-suite and board, VPs and experts, directors and managers of customer, partner, and employee experience. To give you a full appreciation for what's needed now and the power of experience leadership in contrast to experience management as we've known it to date, let's take a brief look at the evolution of customer experience management. So it all started with the intense competition from Japanese consumer electronics and automobiles, steel and semiconductors in the 80s. And Congress set up a national quality award with emphasis on customer focus in management, processes, and business results. So this uh, lit a fire among a wide variety of industries to participate and uh, make customer focus uh, central in their business management. And right after this, we also saw a pivotal article by Fred Reichelt and Earl Sasser in the Harvard Business Review, where it was the first time that lifetime value was emphasized and shown evidence to be much more uh, productive and uh, profitable than just customer acquisition. So the next year, I was really intrigued by a book called The Customer Driven Company. It was the first time that it laid out these core competencies of experience strategy, voice of customer and intelligence, culture and accountability, uh, customer-centered uh, improvement in design and metrics and analytics. So I was a speaker at the second annual Customer Satisfaction Conference that was jointly managed by the American Society for Quality and American Marketing Association for many years. And at that time, I was in the strategic planning department of a company it ranked in the Fortune, uh, ranked about 250 in the Fortune 500. And uh, in that role, I was uh, leading customer satisfaction as a task force for all of our many countries and product lines to figure out how we wanted to define our customer satisfaction method methodology. And uh, well, that was a really pivotal uh, point in my career, obviously, because I was uh, specifically a voice of the customer manager in 1991. So, uh, you know, what happened is in the late 1990s, everyone got enthusiastic, just over the roof about CRM customer relationship management software. And that pretty much took over the momentum that we had been building in customer-focused business management of the early 90s. CRM was uh, really uh, the thing that people were placing all of their money on for making all the success that they wanted to have in business. And around the turn of the, the century, we also saw this word experience come in and replace what we had earlier called customer satisfaction, retention, and loyalty. Now people were beginning to call it customer experience. But in 2008, we had the global financial crisis and that spurred the real awakening of customer experience management as something that every company needed in order to thrive or survive uh, actually survive, first of all, the uh, global economic crisis and to uh, emerge thriving quicker than their competitors. So in that quest, we saw brand allies, customer success, journey mapping and design and digitalization really explode. In uh, 2015, I was this, the first recognized training provider by the CXPA for an online course in a CCXP exam. And uh, Ian Golding and I were actually the, the first providers that were recognized uh, together, I believe. So fast forward to these past few years, we've had a global economic, the global pandemic crisis, and everyone has suffered through so many hardships during these past few years, a lot of disruption, a lot of, uh, you know, 
life and death situations that we've uh, experienced ourselves or with, with family and friends and a lot of value reduction. In fact, uh, what everyone is clamoring for now is more trust, more values shared with whoever we're working with and more value. But ironically, value has actually decreased through shrinkflation, shrink skimpflation and inflation, even by organizations that didn't have to because they could. So this is definitely a step in the wrong direction for what's needed in the 2020s. If we want to be the preferred brand, we want to be recommended, we want to uh, have the highest uh, growth rate in our industry. We really need to be paying attention to trust, values, and value. So here's a peek at that uh, Edelman Trust Barometer that I mentioned with more than one third of people distrusting business and about two thirds uh, basing their decisions for working, uh, buying, and investing on beliefs and values in, in common with them. Now here you can see the customer satisfaction index in America drip drop, dropping off since 2017, and we have not been this low since 2006. So I think that's a big wake-up call to consider what's working and what's not in the overall scheme of things. Now, Bruce Temkin has run uh, maturity studies for the past 10 years or so, and every year it's the same. Less than 10% of companies in the mature phases of uh, customer experience management, and about 80% of people saying that they're incompetent for these six key competencies for how to drive ROI in customer experience management. So how do we address this? The experience leadership mastery can fast track you to that. We designed it specifically for that. So let's pay attention to what customer experience and experience management actually are. For a customer, employee, or partner experience, it's their realities in get, selecting, getting, and using your solution or their relationship with your brand toward their intended outcome. That's what the experience is. And to be more succinct, you could say that it's their realities in comparison to their expectations. Are we meeting or exceeding their expectations in what we're delivering? And if not, are we managing the expectations to a more uh, practical level? So experience management is how you manage what they experience. And that includes how you manage their expectations. I like to think of it in three categories, starting with touch point management, which is aimed at revenue, or if you're an employee experience or nonprofit or government, perhaps it's productivity in place of, re of revenue. But essentially what you're trying to do is reverse and offset churn because every month you have to show successive growth. So you need to make up for what went out the door and touch point management is uh, one of those key ways to do that. Then second, we have experience management with the aim of brand allies. You want your customers, your employees and your partners to advocate your brand. And we do this through increasing referrals and quick wins. And then thirdly, what's needed now is something more. Experience leadership, which aims at lifetime value maximization for customers, partners, and employees. And we do this by preventing roadblocks to value. Now notice that for touchpoint management and experience management, we're pursuing how they can maintain or expand revenue or productivity. And for experienced leadership, we're pursuing how can we aid their goals? Because if you aid your employees' goals, your partner's goals, and your customer's goals, they're the hand that feeds you. You rely on them to make everything work to deliver the value, and investors rely on that. 
So what we need to be doing is spending about 50% of our attention on this third column and dividing the other 50% among these first two columns. If we were to do that, we will find that we're laying a foundation of prevention and lifetime value mindset across our entire company and ecosystem so that there's less burden on touch point management and there's greater uh, traction and scalability and experience management. So we're not saying to throw the baby out with the bathwater. We're saying that we need to step up to the new realities of the 2020s that emphasizes and calls out urgently for greater trust, greater values, and greater value, and making sure that we're closing the gap between expectations and realities, which is actually brand integrity. Are they getting what we told them they would get? Easier said than done, but we need to strive for that. So what you need to know for 2020s and beyond is a different angle on metrics and leading indicators, more preventive, more collaborative, more systemic and sustained. What you need to know for design and change is to emphasize the six A's of experience management because that will make your experience management team exponential in its value creation by engaging more groups in the company to do it themselves, make them self-managing in improving designs, improving the experience, uh, driving efficiencies and driving growth of all manners across your company based on customer insights. It's ridiculous not to. Uh, what we're trying, what we're saying actually is we're de-siloizing the company by creating a consistent thread of customer-centric uh, thinking and actions across everything done. And that's what we mean by embedding customer insights into the culture and driving accountability for implementation. So your voice of the customer and intelligence needs to support all of the foregoing items. When you have a very clear understanding of these first three items, your voice of the customer takes on a very different angle to be more transformative, to be more collaborative, to be more uh, insightful and uh, stimulating for managers of all types, every nook and cranny of your company to pay attention to what's going on with customers and the intelligence, the, the patterns that you're sharing with them that are quite interesting. They can't wait to hear your next report and see what they can do about it. So strategy in experienced leadership is bringing this all together in a cohesive flow so that everything builds upon one, one another. And we're not just managing these things in pockets, but actually having coordination and collaboration across all the various places where experience is managed in a company. Making the intended customer experience or intentional CX your North Star for how the C-suite runs the business and how everyone makes their decisions and handoffs across your company. So it may sound pie in the sky, but we've got to aim for it. And in fact, I have personal experience driving most of what I'm talking about with you when I was in the semiconductor industry and head of corporate quality, leading company-wide customer experience, essentially the chief customer officer for many years. So uh, we followed the six A's of experience management success and what you learn in the Experience Leadership Mastery curriculum teaches you how to do these things from my own experience and many things that I've done since, such as uh, benchmarking uh, B2B CX practices globally for five years. I was the first person ever in the world to do a B2B CX practices study. So all of this is answer to the things that Bruce Tempkin was pointing out as incompetencies and lack of maturity. It's, it's an answer to all of the things that we've just been talking about with trust and value and an ongoing trajectory of progress and experience management. So what we start off with is, as the basis is the CCXP exam course because it addresses these five competencies 
that have been the thread for the past 35 years. And it goes beyond what's in the CCXP exam criteria, far beyond, because with every concept, I'm pointing out what's additionally needed for experienced leadership, which is not really additional. It's a tweak. It's a twist. It's a, it's a, a bit of a pivot or a, a slight adjustment in your thinking and the way that you're going about things. Now, for people who don't need the certification, they're not on that path, Experience Management Maturity course is essentially identical, just taking out the certification part. And for people who have already gotten a certification of any type from wherever, or maybe they've been uh, judges and winners in awards or keynoters, uh, authors, maybe they've been in this, this field for a long time, they can learn experience leadership with more sophistication and a lot of extras in the experience leadership for experts and executives. Now, for people who don't want all of that uh, sophistication, maybe they're new college grads or uh, uh, less experienced managers, maybe they're new to this field, or they could be also working with someone in experience management that they are a, an experienced enthusiast or they just want to know Perhaps they're selling to people in the customer experience field or employee experience field. And it would be very uh, advantageous if they would understand, you know, <laughs> the greater, the broader context of experience management. So in that case, we have automatic experience excellence. So that's at the foundational level. Okay, so we're covering foundational, intermediate, and advanced levels. And for the C-suite, I pulled highlights from all the key points and packaged that in a two hour workshop where it's uh, delivered remotely live and we cover three main areas with an exercise for each one. And that includes their takeaways and conversation, but uh, it's a two hour session and people have loved it. So these uh, six courses, because there's the additional uh, version for your experience management council or steering committee. These six are the modernized vision for automatic experience excellence. And by that, I mean, when you prevent issues from happening, well, it's a great experience because customers' realities match their expectations. So there's no gap. The brand is has high integrity and therefore, it's an excellent experience, whether you're a, a, a discount brand or a luxury brand or anywhere in between. So automatic experience excellence, what we're aiming for, and these six uh, versions of the same content allow everyone in your organization to get on the same page at the same time in their own way, because their self-paced resources are right-sized for them. And if we have a live session, whether I'm uh, delivering that to you in a public forum or uh, privately, or maybe you're uh, doing your own uh, live sessions in terms of uh, application exercises, uh, making contests, lunch and learns, extended staff meetings to go over certain things together. Well, there's so much content that is identical or nearly the same in every single uh, version of this that it's easy to have those uh, conversations and have a really rich cross-pollination. So this lays the foundation for what, what should you be doing? But it doesn't go into a lot of detail on how. It goes into some. But what we have for how to is called customer-focused communication. Essentially, it's an internal collaboration course that is uh, either self-paced or live. And you're learning how to drive to intended outcomes, how to check assumptions, how to communicate more effectively with uh, other functional areas who have a different uh, jargon and uh, you know mindset and maybe a different uh, idea of, of vision. So how do you get their cooperation? So this has been embraced by even the finance organization of a major health cor corporation the sales organization, the service organization of uh, different places uh, in different countries. 
So customer focused communication is one that you probably want to take a look at for increasing trust internally as well as externally. For customer journey mapping, people often say, well, we love doing it, but we didn't really get the full value from it because they haven't moved to journey management. They've spent most of their energy on the mapping itself. So you need to apply the six A's of experience management success there. And so my uh, course that I facilitate with you on that actually co-creates an expectations persona, an expectations journey map, both of which are different from what you've ever seen, but they drive huge changes for the people who don't touch customers. And let's face it, if you look at the dispositioning of your service or your, your survey uh, findings, most of the big issues are caused by non-customer facing groups and we need to be figuring out how to engage them. Just so happens that's my specialty because when I was at Applied Materials for many years in the semiconductor industry, my whole job was engaging the non-customer facing groups because we didn't have customer service. We didn't have a contact center. All that was handled by our dedicated salespeople. And you want salespeople selling, not fixing stuff. So you want the non-customer facing groups to prevent things that need fixing. So that was my huge emphasis and I pass that all along to you. We have uh, rapid action templates in the masterminds, both at the CCO level quarterly and also in 90 minute sessions any week that you want to join that uh, publicly or privately. And the capstone is really the experience value exchange, which is a hybrid of self-paced and live uh, experiences, templates, uh, forums, and resources of all types, usually in five minute to 20 minute, up to 40 minute bites. So it's something you can tap into every day or anytime 24 seven. The competencies here are really about what's needed to take your maturity to the next level in driving engagement internally. How do you get everyone on board? How do you get them to contribute their part to understand their ripple effect on customers and employees and partners? So it's about ease of business and ease of, of work. The, the bottom one should say ease of work. I've got a typo there. This is for your customer experience, customer success, employee experience, uh, and customer service and marketing teams. Any manager in any of those functions would thrive with the experience value exchange because of these competencies making their job easier and bringing them a lot more joy and satisfaction in all the collaboration and big results that it generates. So that's experience leadership mastery as we have it today. And you know, just to remind you, it gets everybody on the same page for metrics. It gets everybody across the managers, directors, uh, experts, VPs, and the C-suite on the same page with improvement and design, culture and accountability, BOC and intelligence, and operationalized strategy as a team sport, engaging everybody in doing their part. Here's a quick peek at what you get in the self-paced resources for the foundational level, automatic experience excellence. So you can see that there's a, a, a pretty simple menu. That's all it is when they log in. And as they click each one, they're going to see uh, a series of videos or narrated presentations. And these are generally in segments of about 10 minutes each. There's a workbook that includes a provocative, a, a thought provoking, question and or application exercise for every single slide. And then you'll see these uh, video segments laid out on the page so they can toggle between them quite easily. And if they leave, need to be interrupted for any other any reason, next time they log in, it takes them exactly to where they left off. So addition to that, they have 10 true and false questions and a, a continuous audio that they can listen to while working out or during their commute or whatever. So it's quite flexible and it uh, is a way to quickly get people on the same page because it puts it in short bites that are manageable 
and immediately applicable on your, the job with the help of this workbook. Let's take a peek at the next level, experience management maturity. So here you can see the same content, but it's expanded to include multiple choice quizzes, a quiz game, and topic mastery scenario questions. When you submit your scenario questions, I give feedback on every single one. And when you get 90% or higher on a scenario question and topic mastery, then you get a certificate for experienced leadership. So uh, this is again for your director or intermediate level uh, people. And when they log into experience management class, uh, then they're going to see three videos instead of the five that you saw for the automatic experience excellence. So the content is generally the same, but there's quite a bit extra uh, slides in this one. And, uh, you know, it's more on the line, lines of 20 to, to 35 minutes for each video segment. The workbook it follows suit with the other one. And here you can also see that there's more goodies, case studies, links to templates and examples for a variety of subtopics, and then the overall summary. So the self-paced resources differ by level, but experience leadership mastery curriculum can be enjoyed and uh, absorbed and applied by every single level of management in your organization for customer, partner, and employee experience. Because these concepts and techniques are absolutely universal, every time I use the word customer throughout any course, you can replace that with member or associate or donor or constituent or employee or partner or whatever you call, call your people that you serve. Every time I talk about revenue, you can replace that word with productivity or other value that is germane to your organization. So this opportunity to cross-pollinate, to share case studies and use cases and uh, practices and uh, de-siloize experience management across your company at every level and across all these uh, these uh, recipients of your, your services, it's, it's phenomenal. It's a huge value. So I welcome you to go take a, a look at events as well as Experience Leadership Mastery pages at clearaction.com and also take a look at our five minute demo. So clear action means engaging everyone and walking the talk. You know, during the pandemic, everyone was thinking about what's valuable in life. And for me, creating new content, thinking about new ways of uh, helping people to absorb a better way, helping to improve the, the whole world by having better experience management in organizations of all type is what I want to do. So I repackaged all of my consulting wisdom and put it into training format or course format or sort short live session formats. And this is why it looks like training, but it's actually e-consulting. It's actually high powered, super rare advice. The kind of advice that you would probably get from McKinsey if you had people at McKinsey with the kind of career background that I have. So this saves you time, continuity in your workflows, and saves you lots of resources compared to going to conferences or traditional training. And the experience leadership angle boosts your influence, reputation, efficiency, capabilities, and growth. It's the answer to turning the tide on that competency uh, report that Bruce does every year or every couple of years so that we can now see 80% of experience managers having excellent capabilities in each of those competencies. So we could see 80% of companies having strong, high maturity in experience management, not just customer, but employee and partner experience as well. It's ridiculous that since the 2009 economic crisis, we have spent billions 
on technologies, journey mapping, service improvement, uh, digitalization, all kinds of experience work, and certainly awesome progress. But goodness, we have to change how many people trust businesses. We have to change the trajectory of this customer satisfaction index on an upward slope, not a downward slope since 20, 2017. We have to change the way that people see our shared values and the value continually increasing for customers as much as it's increasing for investors and employees. There, we all rely on customers for our salaries, for our budgets, and for dividends. It makes no sense to be decreasing value for them. When you take Experience Leadership Mastery, you're going to see hundreds of ways that you can be cutting costs, but in a smart way that actually uh, will be rewarded by customers. So take a look at our demo and let me know how I can help you. It's time to shift up to 2020's essentials for high profit customer, employee, and partner experience excellence. I welcome you to Experience Leadership Mastery. Looking forward to talking with you soon.